Hi there, my name is Daryl, and today I'll be giving you a high-level overview of DMX. DMX is amazing because it lets you control all of your light fixtures, even though they have different functionality and they're from different manufacturers, all in one spot. Learning DMX can greatly help you improve your light shows and let you be in control, rather than being left at the mercy of the built-in macros or the sound activation modes of the individual fixtures. Even if you use a software program like My DMX Go or Sound Switch that abstracts the low-level details of DMX, it still will benefit you to understand how it, it works. And if you're like me, you might feel overwhelmed learning DMX at first. As a software engineer, it helps me to understand the big picture before diving into the details. I'm hoping to help you achieve your aha moment sooner because the sooner you can master the technical aspect of DMX, the sooner you can unleash your creativity. The first thing to look at with DMX is the actual signal. So there is 512 values that are sent simultaneously. Each one of these values is a number from 0 to 255, with 0 being the default value of off and 255 being the max value and we'll cover a little bit more of that later. So first, you need a DMX controller, whether that's a physical controller or a computer plus DMX software. That configures those 512 values, it configures the DMX signal so that it can send it to your fixtures so that they know what to do. And if you use a computer and DMX software, which is what I personally prefer, you'll need a USB to DMX interface so it can convert the digital signal into a signal that your fixtures can understand. And you can connect your fixtures from the interface using a DMX cable or with a wireless transmitter. Each fixture has a certain number of channels that control what it does. Consult your manual to find out what each channel does. And take note that sometimes there's different modes and you have to set the mode on your fixture to configure that certain functionality. Here's an example LED PAR. It has four channels, a dimmer to control how bright it is and the amount of red, green, and blue that is sent. You can set the address of your fixture and it will listen to that range. When a fixture receives DMX input, it receives all 512 values. But since we know the address is set to one, and since we know that it listens to a range of four, we only care about the values on channels 1, 2, 3, and 4. In this example, I have channels 1 and 2 set to 255, the max, and the rest are 0. Channel 1 controls the brightness, and channel 2 controls the amount of red. When I set channel 2 to 0, but set channel 3 to 255, channel 3 controls the amount of green, so the color turns green. And note that we are still on DMX address 1, so it's listening to this range of 4. And the same logic applies when I put channel 3 to 0 and I put 255 to channel 4. Now it turns blue. And what happens if we turn on all the channels to max? Then it turns to white. And it doesn't matter how much red, green, or blue we send to our fixture, if we have the dimmer set to zero, then the light is off. And not all lights have a dimmer, so make sure to consult your manual. And if we change the address, start from one to two, then our fixture will still listen to a range of four, but starting on channel two. So it listens to channel two, three, four, and five. So even though in the DMX signal there's a 255 for channel 1, this fixture does not even care, does not even listen to this channel. It's only listening to 2, 3, 4, and 5. And red and green creates yellow in LED world. And we can set this fixture to any address we want. Let's look at a real life example. Right here on the left I have a USB to DMX converter. This end would normally go into a computer, and we'll do that later. And the other end is connected to a DMX cable. And there's a difference between DMX and XLR cables, but we'll ignore that for these purposes. 
So we have this DMX cable that is plugged into the DMX in of our fixture. So this is how the signal gets into this fixture. And our fixture has the ability to also relay that to another fixture with the DMX out port. So we plug in another DMX cable into this out and put it into this in port of this other fixture. And something to note is that the DMX signal isn't modified while it passes through this fixture. So the same signal that the computer configured gets to this one and to this one. That's important because you can control each individual fixture to do something different or you can group them together to do the same thing. And it doesn't matter what position the fixture is in the chain, they all receive every single one of the 512 values. They can choose which range to listen to. In this example, the first and the third par lights in our chain have their address set to one. And as we can see here, they are set to yellow. So the dimmer is up and red and green is set all the way up as well. The second and fourth fixtures have their channel set to five and are purple. As you can see here, red and blue create purple in LED world and in normal world too. And you can have as many fixtures as you want to listen to any of the addresses. But if you have more fixtures than will fit in 512 values, there's a solution that's called the DMX universe, and you can have multiple universe, so multiple sets of 512 values. But that's an advanced topic for another day. For most people, especially just getting started out, you will only need to worry about one universe. So I hope this helps. When it comes to a high level overview of DMX, that's about it. So you have 512 values. They are set by your DMX controller and they are sent to your fixtures and your fixtures listen to a certain range. And depending on the values that were configured in the software, it controls their different channels, which control their different functionality. So let's go ahead and do a live demonstration. Now I'm going to give you a live demonstration. So I have some DMX software on my laptop and it is connected to my fixtures using a USB DMX interface as you can see here. And then just like we saw on the slides, I have these two data chain. So these two PARs are slightly different than the ones we used in our example. These have 10 channels each as you can see here. And I have these programs on channel 1 and channel 11 because they are 10 channel fixtures. And as you can see here in this software, each one of these faders represents one of the DMX channels. So the first one is listening to channels 1 through 10. The second one is listening through channels 11 through 20. And as you saw, channel 1 controls the dimmer. So let's go ahead and test it out. I turned off the lights because it's easier to see. So channel 1 will turn the dimmer all the way up and channel 5 controls red. And just like that we see red going up. So the less red I apply, then the more it fades. And we saw that channel 7 controls blue, so that is purple. So the more blue we see it more turning towards a purplish shade up until where it's really purple. And if I turn down the red, then we'll see that it turns blue. And since these are programmed on two different channels, I have to control this one separately. So I can turn the dimmer all the way up. And then channel 16 controls green. And now, if I change the channel, if I change the channel of the second fixture to be one, expect both of them to be blue. 
without changing any of the channels in here. And if I change the channel of the first fixture to be 11, then it turns green. What happens? So we have these two fixtures listening within this range of 20. So that means it doesn't matter what happens to 21 because it is not, these two fixtures are not listening to it. So that's it. So that's my introduction into DMX. I hope you found it helpful. And in the next video, we're going to go over chases and scenes and how to start creating light shows. If you found this useful, please smash that like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Until next time, bye.